Hello, my name is Christy Strauss. I'm an associate teaching professor here at University of Washington program on the environment. This video is about how to create effective teaching videos from home. I will talk about length, tools, script, uh, and audio and video quality. Okay, length. You do not want to replace your 50 minute in-person class with a 50 minute video, trust me. Instead, think about the big ideas in the lecture that you're putting online and then break your lecture into that many chunks. Typically, I break a 50 minute lecture into two to four video chunks. Each of these chunks details one aspect of my lecture for that day. And importantly, even after chunking, my video time does not add up to 50 minutes. When teaching in person, I spend a lot of time in conversation with my students and having them be in conversation with each other, even in a 250 person class, right? Students are doing think, pair, share. I'm asking and answering questions. They're writing on a prompt. So a 50 minute in-person lecture for me usually breaks down to less than 30 minutes of video content. When you are chunking content, you want each chunk to be four to 12 minutes long with that sweet spot is six to nine minutes. Next is tools. Zoom was designed for and is awesome in online meetings and synchronous class sessions where Zoom tools allow interactivity and student engagement. Ideally, you should record and save these synchronous sessions and make them available for students who are unable to attend. However, Panopto was designed specifically for lecture capture, and it's an amazing tool for creating asynchronous, easy to view lecture recordings. One of my favorite features is that if you use Panopto, you can embed quizzes directly into the video and Panopto will automatically upload those scores to Canvas. You can embed these quiz questions in your video after you record the video. And these quizzes keep students actively thinking about course content while they're watching your video instead of passively listening. Such active learning is associated with better retention of the material and better exam scores, better learning. Building reflection or quizzes in videos gives students the chance to think about the content rather than just having it wash over them. Next is script. I script all of my online videos while if I'm in person, I just talk. In person, there's value to long pauses and it's fine to kind of wander through your ideas to get to your point. In a video, you want to be as direct and articulate as possible, which for me really only works if I script. I should also note that your videos can be just audio over PowerPoint. I did that for years and heard from lots of students that this was fine. It's certainly a huge improvement over PowerPoint slides with no audio. And I give you permission to shoot your videos this way if you need to. But do know that many students connect better with the course content if they can see your face. Next is audio and video quality. Natural light is ideal and shooting with light in front of you instead of behind you is better. I actually film from a card table in my bedroom and that card table has a great view to the outside. I turn on the overhead light too, and in spring and summer, this has been fine. Another thing to consider is the height of your computer. You want your laptop screen straight up and down, and you want the camera to be about parallel with your eyes. 
So my computer sits on boxes and cookbooks when I'm shooting video. It's cheap technology, but it works. This also helps me read my script. I script directly into PowerPoint and then record with PowerPoint on presenter view. So the slides are on the monitor and the script shows in the laptop screen. If I'm shooting video without PowerPoint, like I am now, I have my script in a Word document and I shrink it so that I can't look down. I just have to keep scrolling down. I can only see about a paragraph at a time. Audio quality can be summed up in one sentence. Use a headset microphone. I have these noise canceling ones that are vital for me because my children are sometimes laughing or crying right outside my door when I'm shooting video and I don't want my students to hear that. But even the headphones or earbuds that come with your phone are so much better than using the microphone built into a laptop. Next is where to shoot. Shoot video where you have the most control. If your cats or dogs or kids are loud and the only room with a lock is the bathroom, you may choose to shoot from the bathroom floor. I sit in my bedroom, which has a lot of doors. Sometimes I make a joke about all the doors to learning, um, but I feel I need to shoot here because I have the double screen set up and I have some control and it works for me. But make sure the doors are shut, right? Look how distracting this is. If I'm shooting with the doors open, right? Embarrassing and distracting. Okay. If I'm not shooting video, I can sit on the floor where I have a plain background. It looks better, but it makes it more difficult for me to keep my computer balanced and read script, etc. So do what works for you. And I should have said this earlier. The perfect is the enemy of the good. It doesn't need to be perfect. Finally, smile. If you're shooting video, smiling helps students feel cared about. They feel that you care about their learning and they think you're actually interested in the material you're sharing. Even if you're shooting audio, smile anyway. Students can hear it in your voice. Okay, as a quick recap, chunk your content, embed active learning, Panopto is awesome, script your videos, Use a microphone, the perfect is the enemy of the good, and smile. Good luck this quarter, and feel free to reach out to me anytime if you have questions. Thanks.